Hi, everybody. Tracksmith sent us a, a pairs of their brand new Elliott Runner, $198 out now. So it's their first running shoe, and it is said to reflect classic New England pep, and I would say also classic New England prep style here. Uh, I've lived in New England most of my life, and the pep comes from the changing seasons, the weather, the often dry attitudes, traditions, the terrain, and the famous schools. Elliott Runner uses state-of-the-art materials, most notably a dual-density P-Bax midsole with the sock liner about two times thicker than the usual at 10 millimeters and really part of the midsole. It has a uh, engineered uh, mesh upper that I'm going to say is trail secure and an all surfaces worthy, I would say, gum rubber type outsole. So it's loaded for New England. Uh, P-back foam being so light allowed Tracksmith, even with that stout outsole, and rubber is the heaviest material in the shoe, to come in at 9.1 ounces, 258 grams in my US 8.5 sample. Stack height 33 and a half, 24 and a half, 9 millimeter drop. So it's a classic daily, geom daily trainer geometry and stack height with the shoe's weight also in that class. Tracksmith also says that um, the following, the Elliott started with a feeling many runners share, their delight in finding a natural surface while out for a run. Who hasn't run the tight rope of a six inch trail beside a wide asphalt bike path? Um, and that's the sensation we wanted, soft, resilient responses and ready for everything. So how did it turn out? The construction of my testing to this point, uh, point to a shoe that is multi-purpose really from road and light trail running to the gym to of course travel, casual and lifestyle uses. But does it really try to do too many things? Let's find out. Hey everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run and we're at my classic New England stone wall behind the house and we want to talk today share with you some first thoughts about the Tracksmith Elliott runner their first running shoe if you're not familiar with Tracksmith it's a now I would say iconic brand focused in New England in Boston and all that implies um, in terms of weather conditions the prep look the ivy look uh, impeccable styling and here they're taking a bold move into their first shoe, the Elliott. So what is the Elliott? Well, as you can see, it has a rugged outsole here, kind of a gum rubber. It is fully p powered, full supercritical foam in a dual uh, density. The tan uh, coloring here you see of the midsole sidewall, of course it gives it a classy look, but it also I think is a coating that helps protect the midsole because PIBA is kind of fragile. You can see it's also stabilizing because it's quite firm, especially in comparison to our uncoated foam underneath. And I, now I'm going to show you the uh, the sock liner, which is a, a softer uh, uh, P-Bax, and then the main midsole carrier is firmer. So I pressed it, and it's, it's somewhat firmer than, say, um, Adidas Light Strike Pro to pressing the outer carrier um, and a little softer than say A6's Flight Foam Turbo. But that sock liner I'm going to show you is really part of the so midsole. Here's our sock liner. It is P-Bax as I said and you can see it's quite thick. It measures 10 millimeters thick or about two times a normal sock liner. And if you flip it over it has a really cool inscription. The curious go deeper, exploring time, distance, and speed, testing their lungs. And then we look on the other side, legs and spirits. They delight in discovery and revel in hidden depths. Very cool. So you can see there's also a bit of fabric on the top here. Um, so I've taken it out and it is a very comfortable uh, sock line. So let's look a bit at the upper while we're at it here. The upper is an engineered mesh. Dark blue band is a quite stiff and quite thick uh, material, very dense, and it provides a lot of midfoot support, trail shoe-like support. It reminds me uh, both in um, looks, the white of the Puma Deviate uh, Nitro 2, but it is a bit thinner, a bit more pliable. It's very, very comfortable. Sizing, we're going to get to that on the run, but it is true to size, moderately wide foot. You can see it isn't 
super structured. Uh, here we have a bit denser engineered mesh. We have a bit of a toe bumper. We have a nicely padded tongue here and wide laces. And I found yesterday, I only single knotted them. They came undone. I didn't even notice it until I heard a noise. So the hold is really good. We've got that padded tongue. We've got a uh, full gusset on the inside. We've got very nice denser padding around the collars. We have a moderately rigid heel counter. Now, um, when you put together elements, our Piba sock liner as midsole and our firmer uh, lower layer or carrier uh, main midsole and our gum rubber type outsole, the feeling is of kind of a progressively firmer from soft to firm as you go to the ground and very responsive off this uh, quite thick kind of multi-surface outsole. So um, what uh, Tracksmith says is classic New England pep. And here in New England, we have all kinds of surfaces, all kinds of uh, uh, weather conditions, wet, snow. And I think they're executing this really well here in this shoe. Um, in terms of the hold, it's impeccable, comfortable, all of a piece, really premium. So uh, it is $198, it is available now. Now, in terms of weight and stack height, we are at 33 and a half at the heel and 24 and a half at the forefoot, so that's a nine millimeter drop. In terms of weight, this is an 8.5 US sample and it comes in at 9.1 ounces, 258 grams in my US 8.5, so about 9.3, 264 grams in a nine. So this is in the daily trainer um, kind of categories of weight. I think the outsole probably contributes some to its weight. Uh, the outsole sort of reminds me of, um, of uh, the Saucony Freedom in, in some ways. Uh, uh, so uh, that outsole, uh, so far, my first run, I'm going to take them out and give you more comments from the run, really helps stabilize our Piba here. There's no plate. Um, we do have a relatively flexible shoe here. You can see we have a relatively flexible shoe. So this is kind of an all-around, all-purpose ride. And I can tell you, deliberate, responsive ride. So I'm going to go out now, take them out on the roads here in New England along the coast and give you some more thoughts but this is a beauty oh, that's the marsh we're running along the coast the boats mostly are out there's a lot of stuff left over on the road from the storm snappy our tracks are responsive for a bit firm in the heel okay let's talk about fit we're inland now so um true to size but here i put uh yesterday i had thin um, Tracksmith Speed Socks, and today they're thicker darn wool, darn tough wool socks, not super thick. And this is a performance fit. The toe box is not overly broad, that is for sure. Less so maybe than, say, the Puma uh, Deviate uh, Nitro number 2. But it is very, very secure. I'd almost say that I would easily take this upper for uh, trail running. Uh, certainly door to trail and that translates a bit also to the ride uh, Responsive great toe off quite firm at the heel with that rubber I'll show you the rubber again uh, Unless you're off the heels fast feeling but not uh, explosive more kind of responsive kind of uh, quick from the rubber more than the foam although the foam is certainly felt in the mix so I'm going to keep going here, see what else I discover. So at the end of the beach, I saw the shipwreck of the Lizzie Carr went down in 1905. It emerges when we have big storms out of the sands. Very cool. There's Rye Harbor. So if you're familiar with Tracksmith's catalogs, last winter, uh, this catalog was filmed right here from a mile from my house. Okay, a last little bit of history before we talk about the ride. Right over there, 
the first transatlantic cable came ashore successfully, uh, 1870-something, and there's also a petrified forest that appears. So let's talk about the ride here of our tracksmith, Elliot Runner. Uh, tracksmith says, classic New England pep. So um, there's emphasis here on the classic part. This is a relatively firm shoe. Both the foams and this big outsole deliver a quite firm ride at slower paces, particularly the heel. Look at that coverage. Uh, when you pick up the pace, things get uh, smooth and flexible up front with a lot of response. However, do not mistake this for one of those soft and plush kind of super critical foam shoes. Nike Invincible Run would be the polar opposite of the ride here uh, uh, with its Zoom X. Here we have a relatively firm foam and even though our great sock liner, oops, pardon the dirty laces, is softer, uh, we have a gradient, if you will, from softest right at the sock liner, then our quite firm uh, P-Bax foam and then the big outsole. So it's a shoe that favors picking up the pace. Um, I think uh, folks who are primarily four, mid to forefoot strikers will do better than heel strikers at slow paces. However, once I got going, uh, the flexibility, which is pretty decent, and the response of the p foam really came into four. Also, the stability of all that rubber up front really provides kind of a nice, stable, smooth platform for toe off. Now, while we're looking at the underside, I kept on thinking that the foam feel, the rubber, although I haven't tested it on kind of trail surfaces, makes me think this is more a door to trail type shoe. And, so, and actually Tracksmith in their marketing talks about forest pass and the dirt that's on the side of bike pass, etc. So it has more of a door to trail shoe feel. Uh, firmer, stable, uh, superb upper support. This this upper could easily be on a trail shoe. Uh, app, look at the padding there. So it's really, really supportive. Um, another shoe that came to mind um, was uh, Saucony's Freedom, uh, but here with more cushion, a higher uh, kind of higher stack feeling. Certainly. Uh, a little more forgiving than the last uh, Freedom 5, but uh, something in that vein. And also while we're on the Freedom, uh, this outsole and all the stability it provides say that the shoe should be very good in the gym as well. So it looks like a Tracksmith here is trying to hit a lot of bases with their first shoe. Uh, they got the great supercritical foam. It has the, the kind of response, if firmer you expect from it. Uh, superb upper that really will hold you for just about anything you can imagine even though I would say it's on the narrower side and copious amounts of rubber uh, to a fault almost I'd like to see a bit less rubber maybe uh, certainly at the heel here to to kind of give it a, a little less uh, firmness um, overall so you can see there's some flexibility up front so all in all, it's a really, I think, beautiful looking shoe. There's been a lot of controversy on that. Uh, and it's a kind of a jack of all trades. Um, it could be a very good shoe for your sort of uh, workouts where you really want to be stable and, and secure. Not the lightest, you know, at uh, nine point, about 9.3 ounces in a US uh, 9 for um, with a shoe with super, all super critical foam. but. Primarily, I think you're getting the weight from all this uh, rubber outsole, this copious rubber outsole. So we're going to have a full written review as well. We're going to try to get more pairs, more opinions. But that's the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. It's $198, and it's available now from Tracksmith. Have a great run and a great 2023. Happy New Year from New England, Rye, New Hampshire.